Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Right, this evening, um, I've had this uh, particular tasting up my sleeve for quite a while. Um, and hopefully it will debunk um, one of the larger myths that uh, surround the, the, the whiskey industry. Um, I mean, what am I talking about? Probably ought to say. Um, we're talking about grain whiskey. Now, um, there are a number of, of uh, whiskey drinkers that basically, uh, yeah, there's a snobbery value attached to malt whiskey. We, we all know that. Um, people think, you know, blends are inferior to, to uh, single malts because they have some grain whiskey in. And, well, frankly, that's, that's not, not true at all. But part of the misconception is down to the fact that sort of grain whiskey itself is viewed as, a, as an almost industrial product. Um, and partly this is due to the fact that the grain whiskey distilleries in Scotland are, are huge enterprises. Um, and if you take, for example, Invergordon, which we'll be looking at uh, this evening, I mean, the output of Invergordon itself is somewhere in the region of 40 million litres of alcohol per year, uh, which is a huge amount. I mean, to put that into some kind of um, context, uh, if you take Bamor, for example, um, their output per year is only 2 million litres of spirit. Coalila um, is a bit more, it's 6.4. So, you know, we're, we're talking absolutely huge amounts uh, of, of alcohol. And it's, like I said, it's fueled the, the popular misconception that, uh, that grain whiskey is, is just cheap, nasty and stuck in the blend. So, um, hopefully this evening's tasting will... Um, uh, show you and convince you that uh, that is not the case. Right. Okay. So um, a bit of uh, a bit of waffle first, as per usual. Um, like I said, Invergordon uh, is you know a large a large distillery. Um, it's uh, uh, situated uh, about three miles uh, to the east of uh, the Dalmore Distillery. Uh, on the northern shore of the Cromarty Firth, and it covers a site uh, of about 80 odd acres. Um, it was uh, originally built in uh, 1959 um, by the Invergordon Distilling Company, uh, began operation in um, 1961 uh, with one Kofi still. Uh, they added a further two in 1963. Um, and a fourth one in 1976 uh, to bring it up to uh, its current uh, output. Um, the interesting fact about uh, Invergordon, like a, a number of the grain distilleries, uh, they'd often have uh, within the complex uh, a malt distillery. And in Invergordon's case, from uh, I believe it was about 1965 to about 1977, uh, they operated a distillery called Ben Wyvis. Uh, that was uh, obviously closed down, and incidentally, the stills from Ben Wyvis are now uh, at the Glengyle Distillery in Campbelltown. So, uh, uh, you know, nothing goes to to waste in the in the uh, whisky industry, shall we say? So, um, the company itself um, was actually quite a large scale operation. They owned a number of uh, and built a couple of distilleries. Um, that being, uh, they built Tam Lavulin in, in uh, 1966. Uh, they bought Brooklady in 1968. Um, Tulabardine in 1971. And in 1985, they bought uh, uh, Jura and Glenelaki. Uh, Invergordon Distillers was eventually taken over by White and Mackay, who, as you know, then sort of sold off uh, Brooklady in 2001, uh, Tullabardine in 2002, uh, to leave just uh, Jura, and um, that was that's about it. And um, then Lackey, I believe, was sold off before the uh, the sale. So um, that's a little bit of a rundown on um, Invergordon. So. Uh, um, I'll stop waffling and introduce the uh, the lineup for this evening. Then. Right, piece of paper in hand. Okay, um, so as you can see, uh, I've been raiding the uh, um, cupboard for uh, for some samples for this evening, and um, 
they are all independent bottlings and uh, the only one obviously that we have currently in stock is uh, is this one which is uh, bottled by uh, Raymond Armstrong at Bladnock so uh, thank you very much for this particular sample um, bottled for the Bladnock Forum it was distilled in uh, 1988 uh, February to be precise bottled in uh, May of this year so that makes it 24 years old uh, single cask, uh, cask number 18591, bottled at 56.2%. Uh, the second sample we have here, this particular one here, is uh, another bottling, uh, an uh, older bottling by, uh, by Raymond. Uh, this was uh, distilled in 1972, um, bottled in April uh, of 2009, so 36 year old, uh, cask uh, 85. 110 uh, bottle at 48.9%. This little sample here um, is um, a uh, bottling by uh, Duncan Taylor. Um, this was distilled in uh, 1965, bottled in 2003, uh, bottled at 51.6%, and the cast number was 15537. And finally, this little one. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, to Douglas Lang for that particular sample. Um, part of the uh, Clandenny range that uh, they do. Um, this one was distilled in uh, 1966, uh, March 1966 to be precise, uh, bottled in December of last year. Uh, so it's a 43 year old uh, at 47.5%. Um, and as you can see, we don't have stocks of those ones. We do have a stock of the next bottling of uh, Douglas Lang's in, in the Gordon, but uh, um, unfortunately these three are, are no longer available. So uh, let's crack on then, shall we? Right, okay. Um, popular misconception number two. Two. Well, not popular misconception. Um, grain whiskey. Um, grain whiskey is um, obviously uh, distilled from anything other than, than malted barley. Uh, so you can use things like wheat, maize, rye. Um, they'll often include a, a little bit of malted barley uh, to get the, uh, the fermentation off and running. And uh, most uh, grain whiskey is distilled in Kofi stills, uh, which are continuous stills, so it runs off the still at a little bit of a higher ABV um, than uh, if you're using a pot still. Um, and this is what allows grain whiskey to, to age amazingly well. I mean, sort of 40, 50 odd years is not uncommon uh, for the aging of a, of a grain whiskey. Now, as they tend to spend such a long time in the cask, they do pick up a lot of the cask notes. Um, so it's a style of whiskey you have to like. You have to like um, a lot of oak because it's going to have a lot of oak. Also, um, by its own nature, most grain whiskies tend to be fairly neutralish in um, in character. So again, a lot of the flavours certainly are derived from from the cask. Now, when of course uh, you know your, your grain whiskey is quite young, it can taste pretty much like an oak aged vodka, really, um, and it does take a number of years before the sort of the sort of the oxidisation and the um, interaction with the wood brings out a number of these different uh, different flavours and uh, and characters. So, um, I'll shut up waffling and um, stick my nose in the glass. This is the like I said the twenty four year old uh, in Gordon. So. Yeah, so noticeable oak to start off with. Lush, creamy, but it has a sort of vibrancy. It has a bite to it. And I think if you um, have tasted uh, Irish pot still whiskey, then you'll certainly sort of recognise um, that sort of slight sort of spicy, grainy bite uh, character that uh, you get on, uh, on a, a grain whiskey. Very elegant, very delicate. Um, it has a, a lovely perfume character. Uh, white flowers. Um, 
but it's that nip. You can just smell that sort of grainy, um, slight spicy nip, which kind of uh, you know make, lets you know that it's uh, it's not a malt. So, but that is that's lovely. Um, I mean, it's it's all really nicely balanced. It's not too OTT in the oak department, although, like I said, there is a fair amount of oak uh, noticeable. But uh, getting a little bit dusty now. Um, certainly the spices are becoming a bit dusty. But it's just wonderfully fragrant. Really, very, very nice. Um, a lovely, a lovely bottling. Right, okay. Um, power time. Lovely sweet vanilla, a lot of wood character, like I was saying. A bit of cocoa, mocha, coffee, tannins, wood spices, but a nice crisp character to it as well. The finish is very crisp, and then you're starting to get through a little bit of sort of white flowers, a little bit of perfume, a little bit of citrus. It is drying a bit. I mean, that is partly due to the uh, to the alcohol as well as the uh, the tannin. But really clean, really elegant. Um, you know, that is that's that's a lovely uh, a lovely grain whiskey. Really nice. Right. Okay. So. Um, Let's uh, let's look at the uh, the next uh, bottling. Like I said, this is uh, 36 years old. Um, they're not cheap these bottlings. It has to be said. Um, but you know they are something different. Um, although in saying that, the um, the first one we tasted is not that expensive. And the nice thing about um, the Bladnock Forum bottlings is that. Uh, the that uh, Raymond doesn't charge the earth for them. I mean, so they're about it's about sixty quid. Um, you know, so it's not it's not sort of like in the um, stellar league of uh, um, say some of the, the uh, Clan Denny's, which are well over a hundred. So um, anyway, let's shut up and um, stick my nose in the glass, shall we? Mmm, really pungent, um, oily, dense vanilla. Um, some oily orange, citrus fruit. Again, it's got a slight um, spicy, grainy bite to it, but you can smell this, 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 the age on this. I mean, it's a lot older. Um, but again, it has that sort of lovely, slight sort of perfumed character, that lift to it. Um, <clears throat> but it's it's the chunky vanillins that you, you definitely can uh, can smell on this. I mean, it's it is um, very very heavy on the oak, but it's so lush, and you're almost starting to get into kind of bourbon territory. Uh, I mean, a number of the, these old grains do tend to sort of age in, they either kind of go in a slight bourbon -y kind of way because they're taking up so much of the oak, um, or they tend to move more in a, um, a kind of rum-like direction because they then, obviously spending so long in the cask, you get a lot of oxidisation character which gives you this kind of dried fruit and sometimes they remind me a little bit of sort of oily Guyan and rum, um, but this is, is starting to become quite bourbon like but um and almost almost a bit rye um again with that sort of slight sort of crisp character um but you know this is absolutely gorgeous really thick really dense mm. i love this this is stunningly good <coughs> right okay uh let's see what it's like on the palette then shall we slushes oh that's just glides down the throat oh a lot of oak again toffeed 
cream caramel, vanilla, so rounded and I'm, I'm just getting this wonderful grapefruit juiciness right on the finish and it's it's starts off quite rich quite dense but finishes quite dry Gen very gently spiced uh, again with that that nip but oh, it's just so long so smooth so succulent and this is basically what happens with with good grain whiskey stick it in a good cask for 30 40 odd years and it really comes out wonderfully smooth wonderfully soft a little bit of honey that is I mean yes it's old it's you can taste it's old but it's still got this lovely sort of citrusy sort of you know balancing um, note and as you know with all spirits that uh, um, that, I, that I taste what I want is balance I don't want one flavor or the other to, to overwhelm and although like I said it's it's it is heavy on the oak there's a lot of vanilla and it's just got that wonderful um, citrus note which just gives it a little bit of a lift mm. Mm, that is stunningly good I like that mm -mm. <laughs> Okay, on to the 38-year-old. So uh, again, so we're moving up slightly in, in age. Um, again, let's see what uh, what the nose gives us. Now, there's a similarity to um, to Raymond's bottling. Quite dense um, and oily. Now th this, but this has moved more less in a sort of a, a bourbony kind of way and this is this is moving now more in a sort of uh, a rum like direction although it's not sort of hugely overtly um dried fruit style there is a little bit there quite perfumed there's a, a sort of a violet sort of white flower kind of note but it's really dense um and um it's gorgeous liquid honey a um, little bit of spice not so much of a, a graininess as uh, the previous two bottlings but certainly again there is a little bit of grainy character there so again it's saying you know hello I ain't, I'm not a, a malt whiskey you know now I'm getting some burnt caramel no no not burnt toasted toasted caramel mmm Mm. But again, it's that sort of lovely perfumed character. That is, that's a lovely nose. Really complex, really mellow. Mm. Like that. That's nice. Right, part time. I think that sample's getting a little bit old. The ending is getting a little bit spirity, a little bit sort of, yeah, a little bit spirity. I think it's just, I think the the, the sample is just a bit too old. But I certainly started off with some some lovely dense vanillins, a um, little bit of dried fruit, a little bit of spice, some very luscious honey. But then I've, it kind of stops and I'm getting a lot of a lot of spirit quite sort of herbally sort of slightly high toned spirit which I just think is basically the sample getting a little bit old I mean um, well it's been knocking around now ooh, since 2003 um, so I think uh, I think you can sort of forgive it um, that shall we say but you know uh, I, re I remember when uh, I first tasted this is absolutely gorgeous and I mean certainly the nose was just absolutely divine um, I think like I said palate's getting a little bit uh, a little bit old but you know um, I guess that's uh, that's to be expected right okay and on to the last one the uh, Douglas Lang clan Denny uh, 43 year old um, distilled in 1966 um, year before I was born um, year we won the World Cup 
Um, and um, this wasn't a cheap mop, this was not cheap. I mean, this was about £130. Um, and, um, well, let's see if it, it's, uh, it was worth it then, shall we? Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, that's nice. God, I bet you wish you were smelling this. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is one of those ones that has definitely moved in a rum direction. Oily slightly Guyana like uh, or maybe sort of um, in more Trinidad possibly um, um, lots and lots of spices it's a big big nose it has to be said um, juicy I'm getting sultanas raisins I mean, there's a little bit of a spiciness there now, a little, a very little bit of that sort of grainy bite, but, you know, this is so mellow and so luscious. Really dusty spices. A um, bit of cinnamon. Maybe a little bit of clove, possibly. Uh, I mean, this is just unbelievably good. I mean, you know, 130 quid. Yeah, too right. I mean, this... This is just unbelievable. Slight, slight citrusy character now coming through. A little bit of sort of perfumed fruit, um, and perfumed flowers, um, but it's that real sort of oily, rum-like dried fruit that's uh, that's the main uh, aromas from this, and oh, it's unbelievably good. Mm, like that. That is just stunningly good. Mm. Sugar coated dried fruit, raisins, crystallized orange, a bit of sultana, soft spice mocha coffee it's just unbelievably complex it really is amazing little bit of spiciness very very gentle very very old i mean it tastes venerable shall we say um does taper out a little bit but that, again that could well be down just down to the uh, the fact that uh, there wasn't um wasn't a huge amount left in the, this little bottle it has to be said um a little bit of white flowers, um, again, quite a bit of oiliness, uh, and that sort of rum-like sort of dried fruit character, but oh, mm, truly, truly stunning, really enjoyable. Um, yeah, that, that was good, like that. <laughs> right, okay, um, let's wrap this up then. So... What have we learned? Um, grain whiskey, really interesting. Um, you know, put your preconceptions aside. Um, forget about all this nonsense about single malts are the greatest thing since sliced bread. They're not. You know, um, grain whiskies are just so interesting and so entertaining. Um, like I said, the Invergordon um, from Bladnock Forum 24, lovely, um, soft citrusy character to it um, which was evident again in the uh, slightly older bottling um, really excellent value I mean like I said available on our website www.gauntlys.com for about 60 odd quid I think it's about 61.95 something like that um, really worthwhile getting hold of um, the um, Duncan Taylor I think the sample was getting a little bit old but you know again displayed a lovely sort of juicy um, rum like sort of oily depth um and the the old malt cask bottling well stunning absolutely stunning uh i mean we do have um the next bottling that they did uh of the i think it was either 66 or 65 i forget now uh which is currently available on our website and is equally as good as this particular one so you know, um, if you've got sort of like 130 odd quid to spare and you want to treat yourself, then, you know, you can't go wrong with uh, with that. So 
Um, like I said, I think it's dispelled a few myths. Um, the fact that you know grain whiskey is not sort of cheap and nasty, although you know, um, as, as long as you leave it in a cask for long enough, it certainly isn't. Um, and it is really interesting in its own right. So um, you know, I really do urge you to sort of look into these uh, into these uh, grain whiskies and sort of give them give them a go and. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised and if you like your rums, if you like your bourbons, you like your rye whiskies, you know, you are going to be sort of, you know, pretty much on safe ground, you know, and um, uh, I love them, you know, I love the sort of the weird and the wonderful, but I mean, you know, these are certainly not, not that weird, they're really quite good, so basically, um, I hope you enjoyed the show um, and, you know, I hope uh, this... Uh, um, What's your appetite to uh, to try some uh, grain whiskey? Um, obviously, in the forthcoming episodes, we'll hopefully have a look at some of the other um, distilleries like uh, Caledonian, Cambus, uh, and what have you. So, but um, for tonight, it's um, you know, good dramming and um, good night.